Stepping into Florida real estate market for the first time? Don't worry, this video will help you out. This journey will be exciting and stressful at the same time, but don't worry. We'll give you five advices how you can start this journey of your life and by end this video, you'll be just like a pro. So let's dive in, let's talk about these five steps that can help you stepping into real estate market in Florida. Before I dive into this video, I love to introduce myself as always, right? Everybody loves talking about themselves. But my name is Alec Petrov. I do real estate here in Southwest Florida. So if you have any questions about Southwest Florida or Florida period, we have an amazing team called the Locals Group that's located all over the Florida and some other states as well. But for this video, we talk about Southwest Florida. I'm super stoked to see you on my channel. I hope you'll stay until the end of this video so you can get advice how to navigate through this journey and in getting into real estate in Florida. Number one, right? The first First point I want to tell you guys is understanding the Florida market because you got a Panama, right? A Panama handle, a panhandle, they call it Jacksonville, Orlando area. You have Tampa area, you have Miami, you have Key West, you have Southwest Florida, Sarasota, Naples, Fort Myers. So you have all these major cities and everything, every market, it is different. I'm telling you, it's if Miami is more busy, it's crazy. Maybe you see some bunch of memes out there talking about all the highways. You got to understand what market you, you are trying to go. If you're trying to go more luxury, right? Uh, you got uh, St. P, you got Naples on the Southwest Florida side. I can get it, you know, Brennan, some parts of it, uh, for Myers, some parts of it as well. I mean, anything on, on, on the coast, right? By the ocean, you'd be more luxury homes on water. Uh, so, but you need to understand which market are you trying to get into? What are you trying to get? You're trying to get into a condo, trying to get in a home, trying to get in more manufactured home uh, as well. So where you're trying to retire, what's your game plan? Understanding the market and the budget, that's number Number one is kind of putting everything on a piece of paper and going down and say, like, okay, are you want a busy life or not? Uh, do you want to more relax? Is the is the community or the area is growing? Even though the whole Florida is put, growing pretty fast, but uh, again, understanding the market is very important. What is heading to? What is happening there? For example, like Cape Coral, right? If you're buying a lot in Cape Coral and there is no city water and city sewer, if you're gonna put a septic tank in the city water, they say they predict in two years. If you are on the lot that sits, no city water, no city sewer, yes, we still have wells, we still have septic tanks in Southwest Florida in some areas. That means you're gonna have to pay $51,000 to connect to the city. So as of right now, you're paying like 12, 14 grand to connect if you're just starting to build a property, starting to build a home. Uh, if the city comes to you, pay about 30 grand now, but in two years, it's gonna be crazy. So you gotta understand the market, understand where it's the city is growing to, uh, what it awaits behind it. So number two, guys, it's budging beyond the purchase price. I wanna tell you guys, if you're a cash buyer, you know your finance, you know what it takes. If you're moving here, you got a budget. That's so many things that you gotta cover is if you move down here, uh, if you're just here relocating from Tampa down to Fort Myers, Miami to Fort Myers area, a little bit different, but it's budgeting, right? Especially if you come to different states where minimum wage are higher than here. So that's the thing again, you get a budget into your monthly payments and stuff for that. And I always say, if you're pre-approved for $500,000, it doesn't mean to me to get $500,000 house. Maybe you can get a 350, a $400,000 house. So your payment is lower and it's easier and it's less stressful for you as you make this move, as you make this new adventure in your life is coming to Florida. If you're a flipper, it's a different story, but if you're trying to relocate here and try to make your primary home or a secondary home, it depends what category can you fall into. But on this video, it's more specific if you are trying to relocate and find yourself a good real estate here in Florida. So understanding the budgeting beyond the purchase price, I highly suggest not to do it because there's a closing cost, right? Every state, it is different. There's closing costs. If you do a mortgage, you have to pay about 1% of that to a mortgage company. You got to pay your insurance up at start. And we all know the insurance cost is just crazy out here, especially if you're buying the flood zone. Unless if you want to live right on the water, right on the beach and watch the sunset every night, go for it. Uh, uh, you know, God bless you. It has to be an amazing spot. But if you're not trying to, and you try to relocate here, and I mean, if you have a budget, sure, but you need to understand the flood insurance, the home insurance, taxes as well went up. Everything goes into, you have to pay, prepay taxes. You have to prepay insurance. So that is going to your closing costs uh, that's, you know, that you have to bring to the table. So those things you gotta do 
calculation on that part. I always say, if you're trying to buy a house here with the mortgage, I just add on whatever your, your down payment, 20%, 5%, 10%, 3.5%. If you're gonna be FHA, add on another 3%, even 4% on top of it. That will conclude majority of your expenses, your surveys, uh, your lien search, your title search, insurances, and blah, 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 and all those details. There's so many things about it. Unless you're a big investor, you're buying left and right homes every couple, couple months, you probably see the altar way more often than a regular Joe that we'll see. And again, HOA fees as well. So if you, you know, you gotta get into your budgeting, you know, it can be pre-approved for $400,000, but here HOA, there's HOAs 300 bucks. There's HOAs 160 bucks. There's HOAs guys, you guys ready though? If you're sitting down, that's a good thing. If you're standing, please sit down because you're gonna fall on your butt. It's $1,800 HOA fee a month, not a year, a month. It just blew my mind guys let's go talk about number three this is importance of really you know to have a really good real estate agent behind you that can teach you kind of that will guide you that will show you things and tell you things and then be honest instead of just telling you what you want to hear because we see that a lot they just want to get the paycheck they just want to see the commission and they will tell you what you want to hear by end of the day if the real estate agent can tell you hey, listen like hey this area is not for you uh and i'm not telling to to guide you or steer you this is not what i'm talking about it's not steering you but just being honest for example i had a family that came down here it's a mother and a daughter uh, the father passed away and they just want to get a new chapter in life they came down here for three days to look around it daughter loves orlando she loves legoland she loves disney world you know it's, she's older and she wants to go in college and she wants to go and work at the disney world and she, they came down here and i saw the mother fell in love with here because he had the beach you know if she they're trying to live more in south fort myers they nearby the beach 20 minute drive to the beach they're there uh, more activity Activities for the mother and more things to do even though Orlando does have a lot of stuff but it does also have a lot of tourists some people love it out there I would love to go visit there I do I want to live there probably not but anyway my point is this we came down we looked at it and I saw how daughter was acting here and I saw her her concern being here and her employment and, and college and, and so many all those things and every time I said Disney World the Lego World you know Legoland she just lights up and I told her straight up go check out Orlando go spend some some time there you know that's the the friendship it, it's it's there and we still talk and the funny part is they found a home out there and they send me home inspection report but asking me questions I was telling them even though I'm not getting commission but end of the day I know they're gonna be happy why I'm telling you this see I didn't steer them to go to Orlando I didn't steer them from some specific neighborhoods and so on and so on what I did tell them I just simply told them what's going to be beneficial for them so you gotta find a real estate agent who's not chasing the commission who's being transparent who's being honest who's being on point or who does a communication pretty well with you and tell you how it is and not sugarcoating you and not telling you what you want to hear uh, you know just like a friend when we pick up a good friends in our life we, we keep them it's the same thing in this in the real estate world as well and they're not just there for you to make the transaction they're there to make the choice of your life you know maybe if it's your first time home buyer you, you want them to help you to make the choice the right choice right right neighborhood especially if you have kids neighborhood where it's better school or the crime rate is lower and and, and so on you know taxes and insurances and kind of guide you to the process and help you get through this and get through the home inspection period and get through, through you know, uh, kind of navigate you through all the communications part with the title company and the home insurances and stuff like that. They can put all these dots together and they can communicate on your behalf, right? Uh, they can lower the prices if it needs to be a request for the repairs, if it needs to be and so on. It's a very, 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 very important. Number four, it's financial guys. If you are a W2 employee, if you are a nurse, doctor, the career you had you have to stick to the same thing you gotta get a couple months of pay stabs some lenders will allow you to get a letter from your employer and submit it to them a lot of them will still want to see a couple months of bank statements of the pay stabs from the company and the letter saying you will make x amount of dollars and so on if you are uh, you know a truck driver or if you're 1099 that's a person that has their own business and you can travel and your business runs whatever state you're from uh, that's another thing is you have to have taxes for two years even though for w2 as well but you need to get the pre-approval going and i highly highly advise you to talk with a lender before making that move after you find 
a good real estate agent, trust me, if they are good and you feel comfortable with them, they will have a good lender. They'll have a couple good lenders. They can't tell you exactly who to choose, go to with what, because it's illegal to steer people, but they can give you a couple. And, and uh, like myself, I have three, four lenders that I work with, and it's uh, based on personality, because just like you chose, you know, if you choose to work with me, because of my personality, uh, you watch my other videos, uh, you got to know me, you get to know my family, maybe you follow me on Facebook, Instagram, same thing. Uh, my desire for every person that I work with, it's a relationship. It's just not a business concept. It's a relationship. And I want you guys to have the same experience with the lenders where they communicate good, where they get things done, you know, and, and they've been honest with you and they've been transparent with you. We've seen so many people get pre-approved and so many lenders that are trying to get their business to get them pre-approved. But when we get to the closing table, things go sideways. It is very, 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 very important guys to understand that, get that pre-approval um, in place, understand that, hey, I'm really getting to this place. Uh, what do I need uh, to get a set up? What do I need in order to qualify for a, a purchase? Hey, you know, when you made the budget, you understand what your budget is, and you know you can get pre-approved for hundred thousand dollars. You want to get something around three fifty, or you pre-approved for seven hundred thousand dollars. So you know everything about that. Uh, it's this step. It makes so much easier to relocate or to move here. Uh, you know, or, or even if you're investing, uh, it's so much easier the process of purchasing, uh, less headache, less stress. And number five, guys, is inspection and insurance in Florida. It's pretty easy to uh, find a good inspector. And again, if you find a good real, real estate agent, they will have as well multiple inspectors that they use, uh, you know, see who's available, see and usually good real estate agent to keep the home inspector in their back pocket because there's good home inspectors to find issues in the house. And that's, that's a bonus because it's investment, right? A lot of people are like, well, I don't want to do home inspection. Listen, you're buying 300, 200, 400, 500,000 dollars, a million, or whatever you're buying, right? I highly advise, even if it's a new construction, I highly advise new construction with the home warranty. Who cares? Get yourself a home inspector. It will cost Cost you 550 bucks, 650 bucks. But if you're buying $500,000 property that like you're gonna live into, that you're gonna move into, I don't know what's wrong with it. But for that much money I'm about to spend, I wanna know what's going on with the house. I wanna know all the defects. I wanna know what to watch out for and, and what's in the house. Uh, if it's not new construction, definitely 100%. Gotta get into that. Uh, again, another thing, they will catch a mold if there, maybe there's a mold in the house, especially after Hurricane Ian when the power went out and some people lost the power for, you know, for a week, uh, 10 days, as the house just set there people left in the house were just sitting there and the mold started getting built up under the kitchen cabinets and so on so it's got you got to do it and the insurances guys it's you need to understand there's also insurance people out there you have a citizen that's most the most major companies going to use there is got uh, is government uh, provided insurance uh, they'll give you some discounts and stuff like that but again there's a flood insurance and there's a home insurance uh if you're buying house in hoa a lot of them will provide you an exterior insurance so you got to get an interior insurance so that is good you know it, it varies from you can go from 900 bucks a year it can go up to you know for home insurance uh five six thousand dollars a year and then on top of that flood insurance it can go anything between two thousand dollars to seven thousand dollars so you can look you might get insurance that's anything between 10 to 14 grand a year right i pay about 2800 bucks a year but there's no flood insurance if i change my windows to impact windows i might drop down to 2400 bucks a year but if you buy a new construction if you're not in the flood zone, they look in between anything 1100 bucks to 1600 bucks a year, which is new construction. I highly advise you guys uh, go check it out my other videos where I talk about new construction. You gotta put a lot of good bonuses for the insurance. Uh, so, guys, that is the five steps I'm giving you guys. And I'm t I told you by the end of this video, if you watch the other ends, you get you understand the importance of budgeting, picking up the market, getting good at real estate agent, getting a good lender, uh, do the home inspection, figure out with insurance. So, if you are deciding to move, here or looking to move in Southwest Florida, let me know. I'd be more than happy to answer any questions and I'd be more than happy to help you out, make this process seamless as possible. There will be some stress uh, as the reality of it. There will be some concerns as the reality of it because listen, it's a big decision in your life, right? It doesn't matter if you move in town, uh, if you're just upgrading, downgrading it. It is a big decision in your life. You know, a lot of us, if we live in some kind of property, we have feelings attached to it, we have memories attached to it, and we have to make the choice and it's pretty tough. So I I understand your pain, but listen, this is why I'm in this business. I love it uh, because I get to see people transform. I get to see people make a decision and I'm part of that.
that. So anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I can keep talking, but I know for the sake of time, when I finish this video, I let you guys go. I hope go check it out my other video, please as well. If you find this video very helpful, give it a thumbs up. Comment below what do you think about this video, and if you want to move in what city would you like to move in Southwest Florida or in Florida anywhere? I'd be more than happy to give you my opinion, my personal opinion. I should go check it out my other video where I talk about different areas of Florida. It's it's pretty cool where I kind of break it down more in details. So thank you guys so much. I hope to see you guys in the next video and give me a thumbs up. Bye guys. See you later.